Yo, I'm Uncle Thor. I'm going to show you how to do a disc brake swap on a non-steer axle on a two and a half ton. Check this out. So we had already done, we've already built this bumper for it. When you get this all finished up after this disc brake swap, you should be able to watch the videos I've already posted on that. Here it is. Here's the hubs. We're going to get all, get all of this apart first. And if you want to see the really good descriptions on how to get all this apart mechanically, go and check out Tactics Repair. That dude has got so much info about working on the deuce and a half. It is just video after video. Anything you need to know, he's got it over there. So shout out to Tactics Repair. But we're going to start with getting these apart. And then I'll show you... Uh, how to get the backing plates off and how we need to clearance the flange to get these disc brakes to fit. Here's all of the parts kit. 
shit that we're using to get this job done. These right here, these are the brackets that Keith Balaguer makes. And I'll put a link, I'll, what I'll do is I'll put a link to all of this down in the description. Um, you know, some of this is a little bit more exciting than you may need. Yeah, this is Keith Balaguer bracket be able to frack or bolt the calipers onto the axle. These are 2000-2004 F350 dually rear calipers. Same with the rotors, same with the pads. So it's all 2000-2004 calipers, rotors, and pads. We have to go with fancy calipers, power stop rotors, and uh, Get the power stop pads here too. Brake hoses, these brake hoses are eight, let's see, yeah, 88 to 89 Lincoln Continental brake lines. And uh, we had these built by these dudes right here. Brake hoses unlimited. So, what I'll do, all this be linked down in the description of the video so you can see what you need. Now let's get on to uh, assembling it and getting some stuff done here, right? This is how simple getting the rotor on is. So this is where the drum came off. This rotor, it just sits, boom, right on there. And if you got left and right specific rotors. You'll have to pay attention to that. But that's easy enough. So this backing plate here, we gotta get rid of it. Each one of these has 12 12 steel rivets holding it on. Um, some guys drill these out. I did drill out one wheel. I just center punch, you know, I just center punch one of these rivets right in the head. Pop it out with a 3 8 drill bit. And it's pretty easy. They drilled okay. But it was time consuming. I got sick of it. So, here's the deal. Liquid rivets don't rivet. I'm just gonna take the torch run and liquefy all 12 of them. Pop this off with a hammer. And then from there, I'll be able to show you the flange and how I cleaned it all up. So that's how I do that as I cut. Cut all those rivets right off with the torch. I usually come in on an angle like this and slip that head off. Liquid rivets don't rivet. So these two holes and these two down here these are the two that we're going to be using to actually bolt the caliper bracket on. In order to get the caliper and the caliper bracket to fit, we need to cut like this. That'll come down. We need to take a little bit of that lip off, so... Actually, it comes up into the thicker part of this flange even a little bit. It's kind of like that. And that's our mark. We're going to go ahead, plasma cut that piece off, 
clean up these rivets, get this all cleaned up, get it painted, and start on the other side. This right here, this is how I get these rivets pounded out after I cut the cut the rest of the shaft off. I just use a punch and a hammer. Make it nice and simple. to a half inch. I, uh, I tried to send a drill bit through them, but it's just wiping the edges. There's just not really enough meat to go from what they originally are up to a half inch, so I grabbed carbide burr. I decided we're just going to rip through it with carbide, and that's, that's working pretty good, you know. This is uh, break three of four on the back of this truck that I've done this way, and uh, how we do it. Get that all, get all the plasma cut cleaned up. And you can see there's this little rib right here in the back. Once you start grinding that flush right through that center part of this, that'll give you enough clearance to get everything all bolted up and get it working. We're gonna go get the other side done now. Get those holes drilled out, get it all cleaned up, get it painted. That's how I did it. Kind of just clean it up, make it so it doesn't look too horrible here. And those are all, you know, we got all of our uh, holes in large and everything ready to go. So let's paint dry. We'll come out here and we'll bolt it up. And then we'll have these axles ready to go and we'll start talking about brake lines. Calipers. One thing that's real cool about this is that these pads, they load up real easy. Once you get them out of the box, though, one thing you need to pay attention to is here's what determines light right from left. This bleeder screw here. So when this is installed on the truck, right, so that'd be the passenger side. This be your driver's side like this. This bleeder screw, I need to speed to the top. These won't bleed out if the bleeder screws in the bottom. So if you flip it over to the other side of the truck like this, the bleeder screw's on the wrong side. You gotta pay attention to that. Otherwise, these are sweet. These pads load up, just super simple. Real nice. Convenient length. So there's your pad retainer. Pops in, cab goes down, pops in. Just like that. Slide it back a little bit. Grab your pads. Now, thankfully, on these guys, 
Even pad. 100% mirrored. You don't have to worry about right or left. Take your pad. I can start on this uh, back side first. Hold one clip up with my finger. Use the tab the pad, push it in, lay the pad over. This, take my screwdriver. Pop it in. Take the next pad, repeat, repeat it on the outside one. That's the only, only real advice I have for popping these pads in. Do, do the inside pad first, do the outside pad last. Other than that, they just pop right in like they should. All right, so this, this is the simplest part of the job. Pull the damn bracket to the mount you modified. If you modify and do this, I hope you can do this. Get the brake brackets on, get the hubs and the rotors assembled, right? We already assembled the rotor to the hub. Once you're at this point, go ahead. Reassemble the hub, that'll be ready to go. Once we get the hub reassembled, we'll pull it on the caliper. Check this out. What I'll do is, well, what I'm going to try to do, right up here, I'm going to put a link to the video that shows you how the hubs go together. All of that. Really cool dude, already does this. He has a huge YouTube channel. So this will be the movie right here. But uh, check this out. Pretty much ready to go. So let's get it back together. This is the easiest part. Just gotta pull on the caliper. About to see all of our hard work pay off. Whoa! Oh. Now it's like this. Check that out. This is what she looks like all bolted up. Hub on, rotor on. Now we're just gonna get the plumbing done, and that'll that'll get us where we need to be. What I'm gonna do? I'm gonna edit. I'm gonna stop this video here. This shows you how to get the brackets on, how to get all the drums off, how to get everything ready. What I'm gonna do is your plumbing and the bleeding of the brakes process and how well they work. That'll be in the next video. So like, subscribe. Turn on your notifications and keep checking us out. I will, uh, I'll keep this updated. We're doing more to this deuce. We got a lot more to do to this deuce. We already got the front bumper done. There's a video on that. I will put the link to that video right here. And have a good day, dudes. Enjoy your time. See ya.